Hey peeps, Chip here to tell you about Real Talk Memphis, the podcast, a new name for the same great show. So join me for great guests with great talk. It's Mondays, 6 to 7 p.m. on WYXR 91.7 FM, the TuneIn app, WYXR.org, or wherever you get your podcast. Now, go ahead and tell somebody. And it's straight up 6 o'clock on Monday evening, the day the Grizzly playoff tickets went on sale. 2 o'clock this afternoon for games 3 and games 4. One question, have you got your tickets yet? We'll talk more about it in just a minute because Real Talk Memphis starts now. With your main chip Washington. When it comes to information, the main got an arsenal. Bring you up to speed with what you need. He's a local and nationwide news feed. Let's talk about it. Dialect to do something about it. Chip got the flow wide open if you got questions about it. Main, it's the show that brings you to your raw. To solve all problems, it starts with real talk. It's real talk. And here we go, here we go. It is Monday, May 24th, 2021. And before I even get started, because I get to rambling and I forget, it is the weekend past that Adam Pageant, yes, my producer, Big Adam, graduated from high school this weekend. Yay! So one down and one to go. Marquette graduates June, what is it, 17th? June seventeenth. So yeah, we, we you know one is leaving the nest and the, <laughs> and the other one is quickly flapping his wings and is about to be on his way. Hey, good to have you with us on this uh, Monday evening on this very very beautiful day. Warm temperatures uh, pushing ninety degrees. Going to be. I think we're well into the spring and and approaching you know summer with a quickness. But it was a very nice day. I hope you had a good weekend past. A lot going on out here, man. I tell you, a lot of graduations, a lot of special occasions and birthdays and other things involved in all of that. Uh, But as always, the business first. If you, um, where it is you are out here, whether it be the city or the county, you can catch us live on 91.7 WYXR on the FM side. Uh, We are broadcasting, of course, live and in color. Get it? Color, color. Anyway, uh, you can also catch us on the TuneIn app, or you can catch us on uh, WYXR.org, all those live components. Now, If you happen to uh, be a little busy and you miss uh, any part of the program, you can also, fear not, I got you. I've I've got you covered. You can also always catch us uh, on the website, wyxr.org. But after tomorrow, sometime midday, we're a podcast, by the way. We are on national platforms across the country. So you can catch us on a podcast, or as I like to say, wherever you get your podcast. All right, now that we got all that out of the way, Everybody doing okay? Everybody good? I hope so. It was a uh, nice time. And by the way, uh, I'm going to do birthdays in, in a minute, the official birthdays in a minute. But I just want to take the opportunity to say, Chip Washington had a birthday on Friday, this past Friday. And uh, I turned uh, 22. And shut up, Mark. Yeah. I, okay, and and, and uh, I just want to take a moment to 
say thank you to all of you who reached out on all of the social media platforms there are uh, from Facebook to Instagram to LinkedIn and, 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 and whatever else you could create to wish me a happy birthday. You can stop now. Okay, <laughs> It was on Friday. I'm still getting birthday wishes today. But I cherish them all, and I thank you very, very much. It is nice uh, of God to allow me another year on this earth so I can hang out with you a little bit longer. Hey, we're going to have a good show tonight, by the way. Uh, my first guest is uh, Sheila uh, Terrell. Now, she, I, I think she can hear me. I'm not exactly sure. She'll be up about 6.15, but she's already in place. So that makes me feel good. When the first guest is lined up and ready to go, it's always a good thing. So we're going to talk to her about uh, the RISE Foundation of the Mid-South. She is the president and CEO. And then we're going to talk a little literacy uh, with uh, Mr. Lee Chase and in the second half hour, we are going to talk about eating healthy, being healthy, doing healthy things. Actually, Adam's father um, gave me this uh, show topic slash suggestion. He said, Chip, why don't you do a, an interview with somebody at the farmer's market? He said uh, he, said he loves uh, farmer's markets. So we are going to talk to the president of the Memphis Farmer's Market. Her name is Emily and her last name begins with a Y. But I'm not brave enough to pronounce it, so I'm going to let her pronounce it when, <laughs> when I talk to her in a little bit. Uh, Emily W. for now. Now, if you are, I'm going to get this out of the way first. Birthdays, anniversaries, and graduations. But first, let me uh, uh, shout out an anniversary to a young man, really, really nice young man. He used to work here in television, interned at WMC when I was there back in the day. Carvis Jones and his wife Carissa are celebrating six years of wedded bliss. So happy anniversary to you both. And now for those of you on the birthday side, Marquette, you ready? Hit it. Ah, ha, ha, ha. You have your own theme music. So happy birthdays go out to Denise Moore. Uh, Mr. Earl Sales, big Earl in the house. Uh, good man. Uh, it is it, his birthday today. Uh, Andrea Bobo celebrating a birthday. Tamika McCann Jones is celebrating a birthday today. Mr. Preston Bird is celebrating a birthday, as is Michelle Haynes Thomas and Miss Barbara Jackson Sago. And also, uh, over the weekend, uh, several folks celebrated birthdays. Let me go back to Friday. Uh, many of you who are in the concert scene in this town or had been at one point or another know the name Bob Winbush. Bush! Uh, he celebrated his birthday on Friday, uh, May 21st. And Mr. Charlie Caswell, Pastor Charlie Caswell, Reverend Charlie Caswell, I don't know exactly how he likes to be slated, but anyway, Charlie Caswell celebrated his birthday on May 22nd. So there you go. You have your own theme song. Tell your friends if they want me to shout them out to uh, let's go and, and give me the information in. You know how to hook me up. You hit me on social media, send me an email or whatever. Okay, Marcus, you can go on and take that down now. So there you go. That's your very big, nice, beautiful birthday surprise. And if you know any of the people I just mentioned, then you need to contact them and say, Chip's doing shout outs on the birthday with music on the background. So, you know, you always, it's a, it's a very special day. It's a very special time. So, we want to make it special for you. Uh, as I said earlier, Mr. Adam Pageant graduated from high school this weekend. Olive Branch, right? Adam. Olive Branch? What high school? Hernando High School. I'm sorry. No wonder he was looking at me with this like, <laughs> blank stare. Hernando High School. So congratulations to you. Um, some news and notes as we uh, generally do this uh, part of the program. This vaccination thing, I think uh, for those of you who haven't gotten your shots yet, you might want to look around and see how things are starting to normalize just a bit. I mean, now it's not a, a requirement, but it's a recommendation. Uh, if you choose to wear a mask or not, many of the big retail stores, many of the sporting events, many of the outdoor activities are dropping the mask mandate. Cities and states all across the country are, stopping, are dropping their um, mandates as well. 
the national numbers are coming way down in terms of infections, in terms of deaths. So, you know, it's, it's a cautiously optimistic turn around the corner. And uh, here in Shelby County, things are looking better as well. Now, I want to say something about the mask versus no mask deal. Of course, I would urge each and every one of you to go out and get vaccinated. You can get vaccinated from the age of 12 and up now. So, parents, you make that decision for your youngsters and get them vaccinated because I can guarantee you one thing, school will be back in session face-to-face in the fall. Uh, so you can just you can mark that down right now. So it might be better if they had a little protection on the front end. But I will say this. There are people out here who um, have pre-existing health conditions, who may be immunocompromised and things like that. If they want to wear a mask, if you want to wear a mask, you wear a mask. If you feel more protected by wearing one, by all means, wear one if it makes you feel better and it makes you feel protected. And I just hope that, you know, people don't shame other people and say, man, why are you wearing that mask? Take that mask off, so and so and so and so. That's none of your business first of all. And second of all, um, you know, if it makes a person feel safer and more secure based on their situation, then I say, you know what? Hats off to you. And besides that, it's none of my business. It's your business. Okay. And it's none of your business out there. It's their business. Moving on. See, I just had to get a little, scold you just a little bit, just a little bit. We're going to move on. Listen, gun violence in this city and in this state and in this country is out of control. I said it before and I'll say it again. We have a new police chief that is going to uh, start next month. One person cannot stop crime. Okay, the police chief can't do it. I mean, they're just a figurehead of a, of of a, of a, of, a, of a, what has become an epidemic. Okay, and over the weekend, I know that many of you may have heard or didn't hear that um, uh, police responded to the scene at a grocery store on the 3300 block of North Watkins in the parking lot of a grocery store. When they arrived, they found a one-year-old child who had sustained a gunshot wound and later died. One-year-old sitting in a vehicle in the parking lot of a grocery store in this city shot to death, out of control. Um, The uh, victim was in the car at the time of the shooting. They have a male detained. I don't know that any charges have been filed yet, but that is tragic on all sides. And, of course, um, nationally, uh, a lot of folks are talking about this six-year-old uh, who was shot uh, in a car in a road rage incident in California, apparently. There were some issues on the highway, and the person decided to take its uh, vengeance out by pulling out a gun and firing discriminately at the other vehicle they were beefing with, striking a six-year-old boy, killing him dead inside that car. We see this all the time here. We see it all the time, everywhere. 13 mass shootings in this country. Eight states this weekend were involved with those 13 mass shootings. 13 people dead and over 70 people hurt. Really? We, can't, we, we, we can do and we must do better. Uh, but yet and still, the governor has allowed uh, anybody and everybody to carry a gun in the state of Tennessee. No license, no background check. You know, you don't have to be certified or anything. Just, just, just carry it. Just carry it. And so now we wonder why things are the way they are. Society has taken a very dark turn, and we must do better. Uh, so uh, on a, an, an opposite note, but still a sad note, I'm sure many of you have heard by now, uh, Scotty Triplett, uh, who was an MPD motor officer, was killed. Uh, on Saturday, he was leading a security detail escort uh, and while he was struck by another vehicle who pulled out in front of him. Uh, unfortunately, he died of his injuries. He was a 27-year veteran of the Memphis Police Department, well-liked, highly respected. I'm sure that many of you have seen the tributes just pouring in uh, from his colleagues and uh, just folks uh, you know, in and around the Mid-South. Uh, who are really feeling this loss. So um, I'd like to send my con- sincere condolences to his wife, Rand, and their children. 
and to all of the men and women of the Memphis Police Department who are feeling this loss. Uh, this is a, a devastating loss, uh, not only uh, for his family and for his friends, but for all of his colleagues who protect and serve each and every day. We never know when God is going to call us home. Um, so may he rest in peace and uh, may his presence on this earth always uh, be a blessing. Uh, I don't know if many of you are familiar with uh, real, estate, real estate developers in this uh, city and county, but Kevin Heineman uh, and his brother Rusty, more, I, I've heard of Rusty Heineman. He is a real estate developer. He died in uh, December of cancer. Well, his brother Kevin uh, died uh, yesterday a uh, possible heart attack. So uh, a lot of folks in the city knew who these folks were. And uh, it's, a, it's a tough time for them today. Um, a very shocking, unexpected heart attack, of course. Uh, but uh, again, uh, our condolences go out to his family and friends and all of those that he left behind. Finally, before I go to my first break, Grizz Nation, stand up. Grizz, the Grizz are in the playoffs, and they went to Utah last night and spanked that tail and stunned the basketball world. Um, they uh, won game one of the seven-game series. I think game two is, I don't know if it's tonight or tomorrow night, but uh, tickets for game three and game four will be here in Memphis at the FedEx Forum. Tickets went on sale this afternoon at 2 o'clock, and uh, they raised the capacity to 50 Five percent of the arena, so that's about what seventy five hundred, maybe eight thousand people going to be uh, in the grindhouse uh, for Game Three and Game Four. That's big time. So let's get out and support our Grizz. Go Grizz, go! And I'm going to go now to my first break. What do you say we get this show started, huh? This is Real Talk Memphis. I am your humble host, Chip Washington. Uh, we are going to take our first break. We'll be back in just a minute. Don't you go nowhere. You're listening to Real Talk with Chip Washington. If you're celebrating a birthday, anniversary, or special occasion, shoot him a note and he'll read it on the air. Get involved and tell somebody about Real Talk. We'll be right back. This is Bishop Phoebe Rofe of the Episcopal Diocese of West Tennessee. Tune in every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. at WYXR 91.7 FM to hear conversations with community leaders about the role of faith in their lives. That's Faithfully Memphis right here on WYXR FM. Hey Memphis, my name is Ron Buck. I am looking forward to bringing you my show, Riverside, every Friday from 1 to 2 p.m. I will be playing rock and blues, old and new, and featuring Memphis music and events. I hope you'll tune in to Riverside every Friday at 1 p.m. on WYXR 91.7 FM, Raised by Sound. You're listening to WYXR 91.7 FM Memphis. This is Nancy, and I hope you'll join me on a musical journey from 2 to 4 p.m. Mondays with Memphis Undercover. You're listening to Real Talk with Chip Washington. If you're celebrating a birthday, anniversary, or special occasion, shoot him a note and he'll read it on the air. Get involved and tell somebody about Real Talk. We'll be right back. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. Real 
And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday, May 24th. I am your humble host, Chip Washington. Very happy to have you with us and very happy to have my first guest uh, with me tonight. Now, um, there are many people in the Memphis and Mid-South area who have dreams of becoming homeowners, who have dreams of being, you know, financially uh, you know, empowered, being able to do some of the things that they want to do. But we all need help. And uh, there is an amazing organization that has dedicated itself to doing that. And I am very honored and pleased to have the president uh, and CEO of the Rise Foundation of the Mid-South. Her name is Sheila Terrell. Sheila, thank you for being with me tonight. Thank you so much, Chip, for having me. Well, listen. First of all, and and and, and full disclosure, you know, she was on vacation, but she still, <laughs> but she still, she still <laughs> took some time. And she told me before we went on there, she said, "I said, how you doing?" She said, "I'm still winning." So I said, "Amen to that, sister. Amen to that." But listen, thank you so much again for coming on the show. And for those of us who don't know what the Rise Foundation of the Mid South does, please enlighten us. Okay, well, first of all, RISE is an acronym, and the uh, acronym stands for Responsibility, Initiative, Solutions, and Empowerment. Okay. RISE is a nonprofit organization that has been serving the Memphis and Shelby County area as of May 1st for 21 years, so we are extremely excited about our birthday. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and basically, um, the function of your organization is where you do a lot of helping of, of a lot of folks out there. Talk a little bit about that, if you will. Our official mission is to empower people to become self-sufficient by building and sustaining human and financial assets. Uh, to put that in a nutshell, I say, say that we are prosperity advocates. We teach the meaning of money. If you um, don't have your finances in order, RISE Foundation is the place for you to be. Every program that we sponsor has one central theme, and that is improving your personal finances. We do that through a number of programs and through a number of ways, but once you become a riser, you're always a riser, and you can learn how, as I like to say, how to tell your money where to go, because let me tell you, Chip, if you don't tell your money where to go, at the end of the month, it won't tell you where it went. You got so, <laughs> I like that. Wrong. Amen so, on that. And so so you talked about some of the programs. And if you will, just kind of give us a, a little bit of a sneak peek, a look into some of the programs uh, that you guys offer to help folks uh, to keep their money going in the right direction. Okay, well, certainly. First of all, our signature program is called Save Up. It is a financial, edu program, financial education program that couples basic financial education with monetary incentives. Okay. So if you are an employed uh, resident of Memphis and Shelby County, you can apply, preferably full time, you can apply for the Save Up program. Okay. You go through five weeks of financial education. That's one evening or morning a week. You learn uh, basic money management skills. We talk about your attitude towards finances. We talk about how to develop a spending plan. We talk about credit and credit reports. We teach you how to read your credit report, how to obtain your credit report, how to uh, dispute anything on there that's negative. We talk about risk management with insurances. We talk about retirement. We talk about becoming uh, banked and everything that's involved in mainstream finances. Uh, after you finish those five classes, we have banking or financial institution partners that we work with who come out and we open special savings accounts. Now that okay. savings account is based on your personal budget and you can save anywhere from 25 to $100 per month. And the Rise Foundation, listen up, will match those funds Two dollars for every one dollar that you save. Wait a minute. Say it again. Find me a bank that can can do that. Say it again. You match what now? Say that again. We match every dollar that our program participants save uh -huh. with two dollars. So if you're saving one hundred dollars, you in actuality earning two hundred dollars per month. Here's the key: that money must be used to purchase an asset. Currently, our assets allow a home ownership. If you purchase a home and then have funding left, you can uh, improve your home. We also allow post-secondary education. 
in some of our zip codes, 38126, 38127, and 38128 specifically. Mm -hmm. You can purchase a vehicle outright. And um, I think I got the, oh, and Micro Enterprise. Let's not forget our Micro Enterprise. And what's which that? Is, um, another really another name for small business. Okay, okay. Unbel you know, I, I ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, we are speaking with Sheila Terrell. She is the president and CEO of Rise, the Rise Foundation of the Mid South. And boy, yeah. you are blowing my mind with uh, the programs uh, that are benefiting so many people out here and can benefit so many more if they just, uh, you know, take that leap of faith. And do you Absolutely. find, and, and how difficult is that? Because you and I both know you've been around here for a while. Um, poverty yeah. is a big issue in this town. And, you know, the economics uh, don't always match up. So, I mean, uh, how challenging is it for um uh, folks out here in terms of maybe utilizing your organization or needing your organization? The citizens of Memphis and Shelby County absolutely need our services. Uh, I say in addition to food, clothing, and shelter, then you need the RISE Foundation. If you are a low to moderate income employed individual and you really want to change your mindset, and that's the key, we have to change our mindset. Right. We have to unlearn some learned behaviors, and we have to get our money straight. Rise Foundation can help you to do that. You first have to take a step and decide for yourself, not what the other people in your communities are doing or the other people in your family um, are doing. You need to make a decision for yourself that I am tired of living paycheck to paycheck. I am tired of not having my finances in order. I am tired of uh, not setting goals. And I want to make a change. If you can make change your mindset and say, I want to do better. You know, I, I was always taught that when you learn better, you ought to do better. That's right. If you come to Rise Foundation and participate in any of our programs, you're going to learn better. And you're going to have some accountability partners that will expect you to do better. Well, you know, what comes to mind after what you just said is, ladies and gentlemen of Mid-South, of Memphis and the Mid-South, get your mind right. And uh, if you if if you need if you get your mind right or you need a mind adjustment, uh, the Rise Foundation is the place that you need to go. Now, Sheila, for those out here who want to get in contact and get their mind right and turn their lives around, give us the information. We want you to go to www.risememphis.org. That's Rise R I S E M E M P H I S dot O R G. And take a look at all of the programs we have. And Chip, one other program I want to briefly mention sure, is sure. in collaboration with the Shelby County Trustee's Office, uh -huh. you can, regardless of your income, come to RISE and work with a personal certified financial counselor for up to a year on any financial um, issue you may be having. So you get your own free of charge financial coach to work with you whether it's whether you want to improve your, your credit, you want to develop a, a spending plan, but you may not qualify for save up, anything that has to do with your personal finances, we can help. And let me tell you, we have an awesome, awesome track record. With our save up program, um, that was our, again our signature program, and we have helped over 900 families to accumulate over, uh, over $10 million in assets. Now, keep in mind, oh my goodness. these are low and moderate income citizens. Uh, we've only been partnering with the Shelby County Trustee's Office for two years now mm -hmm. to um, manage the Greater Memphis Financial Empowerment Center. We've worked with uh, 600, almost 700 families or individuals, and we have helped them to reduce, get this, $725,000 in non-mortgage debt. So if you get your mind right, Come to rise, and I promise you, you can. We can help you get your money right. Well, I, <laughs> I got, I got to tell you, I feel like I've been in church now. Yeah, I, I feel like you know, <laughs> past the play. I feel like I've been in church, and I'm going to tell you something, uh, uh, Sheila. You have given uh, us some extraordinarily valuable information, and I really hope that uh, if you're listening or if you listen later uh, to this particular interview with Sheila, that you and you want to get your mind right, get your money right, and get your life right, 
The Rise Memphis is the place to go. Sheila Terrell, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and your vacay to come visit with the Real Talk Memphis audience. You know I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Sheila Terrell, President and CEO of the Rise Memphis Foundation. Look, if you get your mind right, you can get your money right, you can get your life right, you'll be right. So um, we are going to take our second break, and once we come back, we're going to talk a little literacy with uh, my man, Mr. Lee Chase. This is Real Talk Memphis. I am Chip. You know who you are. Quick break. Right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. everyone this is janet host of jaunt with janet wednesdays from 4 to 6 p.m bringing you new releases in the rock pop and electronic genres with a little bit of the old fused in all here on wyxr memphis 91.7 fm Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this beautiful Monday evening. Chip Washington here with you. Uh, Very happy to have you with us. And uh, thank you again, Sheila, for uh, starting us off uh, in fine fashion. Now we're going to shift gears and talk about um, a problem, something that has been a problem in our our, our, our city and our county for uh, some, for many people, um, to be, in, to be if we're being honest about it, and it's uh, it's called literacy, uh, you know. But unfortunately, uh, there are many people who may not admit to the fact that uh, uh, they are not as literate as they could, and that's why we are very thankful for uh, organizations like Literacy Mid South. And joining me to talk a little bit about uh, their organization and the programs they offer to our citizens is Mr. Lee Chase. Lee, thanks so much for being on the show. I really appreciate you. Man, thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So um, Literacy Mid-South, um, obviously you and I talked offline uh, a few days ago, just trying to get a little background uh, information about your organization. First uh, off, uh, how big a problem is literacy in the Mid-South? Because if you can't admit there's a problem, then we'll never be able to fix the problem. Correct. Well, um, so the estimation is the the number of adults who read at a sixth grade level or below is over 100,000 in the Mid-South. But in addition to adults who are struggling with reading, we also help English language learners if they're looking to learn or improve their English skills. Okay, so having said that, and and obviously that that's a large number uh, that you talked about, you know, on the on the on on the front end there, 100,000 plus sixth grade level or below. Uh, Clearly there is a challenge there. Clearly there is, but there is also opportunity there. And tell us about some of the opportunities uh, that Literacy Mid-South offers. Yes, sir. So we can provide one-on-one tutoring uh, for those adults. If they come to us, uh, ask for help, you know, we uh, we will interview them, find out a little bit about their background, 
find out what their specific goals are, you know, because some of them may just want to improve their reading, but some of them may have very specific things they want to do. Like if they didn't finish school, they may want to go back and get their high set, mm -hmm. um, which is what the GED now is called in Tennessee. Okay. They may want to read, you know, be able to read to their children and grandchildren, help their kids with schoolwork. Uh, some of them may want to get a particular job or improve their job performance. So there's so many different reasons why people come to us. But the nice thing about the program is it provides a lot of flexibility for them. Uh, okay. Before the pandemic, uh, all of our learners were meeting their tutors in the library of their choice. And even though this things are a little bit more limited now, the tutors and the learners are still able to find places like Crosstown, you know, where they can still meet in person comfortably or in an outdoor space and for those who have the technology, they're, they're meeting virtually, kind of like you and I are <laughs> yep. uh, right now. So, well, look, I mean, so you're providing a lot of opportunities. You're providing a lot of options, and and a lot of the things that you that that you spoke of in terms of uh, you know what goals, particular goals, uh, individuals may have uh, that you're that you're there to offer. Um, I think. I can't. I was trying to remember. You and I were talking. Um, you do face some unique challenges in terms. of, Was it volunteerism or was it? I mean, I, we were talking about something. Can you uh, can you fill in the gap on that, or did I just mess that up all together? I mean, I mean, we certainly always need volunteers. I mean, this program would not run without volunteers. Volunteers are, you know, how our learners get the assistance that we we need, and obviously, th this this time has made it more difficult to have as many volunteers as we'd like, because we still do our trainings in person. We like to be able to meet, you know, everybody who's going to help our learners so we can kind of, you know, kind of get a feel for the dynamic up front. So we've, we've definitely had to cut down the number of people that we can train, uh, but volunteers, yes, absolutely is something that we always need. And we only ask for one to two hours a week for a minimum of six month commitment for a volunteer who comes into our program. We are speaking with uh, Lee Chase uh, from uh, Literacy Mid-South. And, you know, you talked about volunteers, Lee, and, and I know you've been doing this for a while. Uh, can you speak to the heart of uh, the Memphian in terms of volunteerism, um, being willing to help others, being willing to reach back and, and help to assist others and the joy that it brings them? Because... Um, yeah, I, I've been a few places in my life, but I've really never seen the type of spirit of of uh, willingness of cooperation and help uh, and the helping of others. Talk a little bit about that, if you will. Yes, sir. I mean, it's it's quite an extraordinary thing. Um, you know, I've, I've lived in Memphis my entire life. And one of the most beautiful things about it is just, you know, having the, seen the way it's changed over the years and having to having seen the pride that people take in this city, you know, and their willingness to to step up and, 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 and be a part of change. Um, and one of the most powerful things that we see, you know, through volunteering, especially when it's helping somebody with reading or learning or improving English. I mean, there's just, there's something very powerful about empowering others by giving them the tools to do things that they never thought they could do, you know, giving them yeah. access to tools they never had before. And that's, and then getting to see them you know, accomplish those goals and seeing how it changes their lives. I was going to ask you about that, you know, really from some of the people that you see initially that come in and, and you know, might be a little ashamed or there might be a, you know, a perception issue or, or just, you know, just feeling, you know, a little embarrassed or whatever. But once they get into the programmatics of uh, what you all teach and, uh, and show them and train, I would imagine that the reward on the back end of seeing somebody come in at a certain level and completely rise, it transforms them completely in their terms of self-esteem, in terms of how they present themselves. That has got to be probably for you one of the most rewarding things I would imagine. It's extraordinary because I'll tell you, I started out as a volunteer tutor before I was part of the staff. And. The last gentleman that I tutored, his name happened to be Lee as well. Okay. Um, he came in reading below a sixth grade level. And by the time we finished working with each other a few years later, he was going back to school to get his HVAC license, you Look know, and that. I had just seen a complete change in the way that he carried himself, 
um, I mean, his confidence level had totally turned around uh, and, and, and you see that and, and we, we see that all the time. And that's whether, like I said, with reading or people who have, who, who are not, uh, who, who, who are not speaking English well, you know, once they really start to get a, a feel for the language, you can just see how, how much, you know, how, how different their demeanor is. So you, 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 you uh, and, and speaking of that, you also have folks who are, I guess, bilingual. You're talking about folks who are speaking, you know, uh, non-English speaking individuals. Am I correct in that? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So somebody who's coming in, English is not their primary language. Um, so when volunteers come to us and we train them, you know, they make a choice. Do they want to work with a person with adult basic education? So that's somebody who speaks English but reads below the sixth grade level, or they can choose to tutor somebody um, with English language learning. Um, I actually train the English language learning volunteers, and we have some people on staff from the University of Memphis that do the adult basic education training. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, Lee, before I let you go, uh, folks who are interested or know folks who might be interested uh, in referring uh, people to you, please give us the information website telephone number. Sure. Um, so if you're looking to volunteer, you can go to our website, which is literacymidsouth.org. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a button there that says get involved and you can click that and sign up. We have a, we have a volunteer training every other month. We just had one this past weekend. So the next one will be in July. Okay. So okay. Uh, you can sign up now for that. Uh, if somebody is looking to be a learner, if you if, if you'd like to get assistance with reading, or you'd like to learn or improve your English, you can call 901-201-6157. That is my work number, and I will make an appointment for you to do uh, an intake and an assessment. I, I do all of those, so I, would, I am here. I am more than happy to get you the help that you need. Lee Chase, Literacy Mid-South. Uh, Lee, thank you so much for, first and foremost, what you do and secondly, for taking time out of your schedule to come on and speak to our audience. Really appreciate you. And if there's anything we can do, you know how to find me now. And uh, so we're, 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 we're connected. But thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate you. Yes, thank you so much for letting me come on and talk about Literacy Mid-South. Listen, we'll talk soon. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Well, that was a wonderful interview. Uh, again, uh, you know, literacy is a problem. And uh, there are a lot of folks, uh, you know, who might be shamed, uh, depending on situation and circumstances in their lives, uh, but do need the help. And thank God for places like Literacy Mid-South. And thank you again, Lee, for being on the show. One final break. When we come back, we're going to get healthy, or at least we're going to try to tell you how you can get healthier. This is Real Talk Memphis. I'm Chip. We'll be right back. You're listening to Real Talk with Chip Washington. If you're celebrating a birthday, anniversary, or special occasion, shoot him a note and he'll read it on the air. Get involved and tell somebody about Real Talk. We'll be right back. There's really nothing better than a box of records, not even a bottle of beer. Drinks are gone in a matter of minutes, the final just won't disappear. Hi there, this is Zach Ives. My show, A Box of Records, plays every Tuesday night, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., right here on WYXR 91.7 FM, Memphis, Tennessee. This is Bishop Phoebe Rofe of the Episcopal Diocese of West Tennessee. Tune in every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. at WYXR 91.7 FM to hear conversations with community leaders about the role of faith in their lives. That's Faithfully Memphis right here on WYXR FM.
Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis. I am your humble host, Chip Washington. And one of the jewels we have here in Memphis is it's a seasonal uh, operation. But uh, when the temperatures warm up and, you know, people start to to defrost and, 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 and come out of hibernation, one of the first places they go is the Memphis Farmer's Market. And listen. Uh, it's it's about that time of year, you know, the temperatures are getting warm and, you know, you all want to get outside. And, and there's a lot of healthy folks out here who want a lot of healthy options. And to spend a few minutes talking with us about that is Emmy, Emily Yazik. And, and, and I'll get my mouth fixed after the show. But Emily, <laughs> Emily uh, Yazik is with us. She is the president of the Memphis Farmers Market. Hi, Emily. Hey, Chip. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Well, listen, thank you so much for being here. And uh, you are the board president of the Memphis Farmers Market. The season is well underway. And so tell us uh, what we can expect, uh, those of us who want to drift out uh, to your location on Saturday mornings. So right now, we are just now starting to get a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables this last week. I saw the first peaches that I've seen yet this year. So okay. that was exciting. Right. Um, lots of cabbages and broccoli and all sorts of fresh produce. We also have a lot of great prepared foods like fresh soups and fresh breads, fresh desserts, all sorts of things made right here in Memphis by entrepreneurs um, who are just looking for a way to start a little business. We pride ourselves in being an incubator for these small businesses and um, you know, a couple that have gotten their start at the Memphis Farmers Market that you may know are the Grecian Gourmet Restaurant downtown. Yeah. Also t- Tiny Tom's, Pimento Cheese, which you see in all the grocery stores yeah. got his start down at the Memphis Farmers Market. So we're really proud to be able to support these small businesses um, and try to give them a great customer base to get their feet off the ground. Um, You'll also find some artisans, which is great. It's a great place to grab a gift. We've got a guy who comes from Mississippi who makes all reclaimed um, little bird houses from all reclaimed uh, uh, wood and, and steel, and they're just the cutest things. So it's a great place if you've got to grab a little housewarming gift or something. You can come and kind of get a little bit of everything. We have food trucks. It's just a fun place. There's always Mem Pops and Zio Matto Gelato, so you can grab a snack for the Man. kids while yeah. you're shopping. So something it's for a everybody. Lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, speaking with Emily Yazek, she is the president of the Memphis Farmers Market. And you know, you know, we're starting to, uh, you know, we've dealt with the pandemic now, and things are starting to slowly loosen up. It has affected all of our lives and made us a lot more sedentary and now we're starting to get back you know and to be fit folks like you you know out here in the world (laughs) um but it you you really offer healthy choices and a lot of people and i would imagine you probably would know this better than me but people are starting to make healthier choices in terms of lifestyle and and food and things like that can you speak to that well, I will say I don't I think it's more than just healthy. I think during the pandemic we saw um there were a lot of issues with our supply chain for food. And so if people know where their beef and where their pork is coming from and it's coming from a farm within a hundred miles of their home, you lose a lot of those supply chain issues that we ran into in the pandemic. And I think that we've all started wanting to understand where our food comes from. So if you come to the Memphis Farmers Market, it's not only a healthy option, you also know, you get to know the farmer who grew that watermelon that you're gonna eat or grew those tomatoes that you're gonna slice and put on your sandwich. And to me, that's one of the greatest opportunities of the market. It's just the interaction you have with the people who are actually making your food, producing your food. Speaking of that, 
can you? I'm sure you've heard story after story. You mentioned the supply chain uh, uh, a moment ago. How difficult for so many of these folks, these farmers and folks that rely on um, places like the farmer's market, how challenging has it been for them for the past 12 to 14 months? Well, you know, luckily, several, the market, most of the markets did not stop running in Shelby County. You know, last year, the Memphis Farmers Market, we postponed our opening for about six weeks just because we weren't sure what was going on with the pandemic. But then we opened right back up and gave those vendors a place to sell their goods. Now, I mean, it's been tough for everyone. It's been tough for us financially. Sure. I know that a lot of our vendors have had struggles, but a lot of them have done really well too, just because of what I said earlier about how people really just want to know where their food is coming from. And so they've actually, you know, we've had lots of vendors that sell out every single week. So that's been a, a plus, I think. Is there, I was going to ask you in terms of the vendor situation, the folks that come, how does that work? I mean, if somebody wants to, to, to come to the Memphis farmer's market and, 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 and sell, you know, their produce or their wares or whatever, what's the process involved in that? So they should just go to our website, which is memphisfarmersmarket.org. And there's a vendor tab at the top of the page that has all the information. It has the applica- a link to the application they can fill out and it'll tell them what to do to fill that application out. And then it'll go through our vendor committee and um, we'll get a- approved or not approved. So. So you said you've been you've been sold out. You, you you mean in terms of spaces, right? You mean available spaces for them? Or is that what you no, mean? Or what do you mean by no, that? No, we do have some spaces. You know, this year we have about sixty vendors that have been approved to come to the market, um, and we have room for about sixty five vendors. So we've still got some spaces. And of course, not every vendor comes every week. Some people just come every other week. So there's plenty of space if there's anybody out there that wants to come. There are people uh, out here now that I see, and, and, and I think it's more and more, folks are becoming more uh, health conscious. Folks are becoming more interested, as you stated a couple of times, in where their food comes from. You know, I mean, how it's processed and things like that. Are you finding that uh, more and more folks out there are more curious in terms of uh, asking those type of questions and really wanting to readjust the way they live and they, they eat and they do everything else? Yes, I think so. And we really try to foster that education piece also. We have a wonderful education chair, Zanetta Ivey, um, Dr. Zanetta Ivey, who organizes different educational companies. It can, it can be students from UT Health Science Center, from the University of Memphis. A dietitian will come and will sit and talk to people at the market about how to make healthier choices. Um, we've had people giving out information about diabetes or smoking cessation, different things like that. So we really try to help ed- not only provide all these fresh fruits and vegetables, but provide some educational opportunities also. Well, that's huge. I mean, that, that, that really, it, it makes it even more all-encompassing. And if you're just joining us, we are speaking with Emily Yazek. She is the president of the Memphis farmers market and you know when you when you look around landscape uh emily uh our farmers markets or markets of of that of that ilk um pretty big around the country i mean is is is, is it becoming is it becoming a thing you know everything kind of goes in fast but it seems like the farmers market just just year after year after year you know gets bigger and it gets better and it's consistent but are you are you are you finding that you know throughout the landscape you know of the mid south or 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 the country as a whole I think so. And I think they're becoming more organized and a little better at promoting themselves too. So maybe where we used to see a lot of maybe farm side stands or something where somebody would sell some watermelons or some peaches out of the back of their truck. I think now they're finding that it's better to to come together with other farmers so that people can do more shopping. So I definitely think it's a rising trend. Now you know you talked about the uh, about the folks that are on the side of the road and highway selling watermelons and cantaloupes and peaches and grapes and things like that. Are they safe? 
is that a is that a safe environment or is it is it I know it's safe at the farmers market, but I'm just saying, is it is that a safe environment? To, I mean, can you trust that? I guess is my question. Well, Chip, I I don't know that I'm qualified to answer that. I don't know why they wouldn't be safe, but yeah. I mean, I might not stop and buy crawfish off the side of the road, but mm-hmm. I think a watermelon is probably pretty safe. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, that, well, <laughs> you, well, that's cool. You know, the only thing I have about watermelons is the fact that you can't tell whether they're ripe or not. People say, you know, you hit the. I, I watch people all the time. You know, they hit cantaloupes. And maybe you can tell me what the secret is to that. They hit cantaloupes to hear a certain sound, or they tap yeah. a watermelon to hit a certain sound. What the heck is that all about? Well, I'll tell you, you got to thump it. And if it sounds hollow, it's ready to eat. And you can also smell where they picked it from the stem. And if you can smell melon, it's ready. If not, leave it there for a little while longer. <laughs> Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. You have learned something about watermelons and cantaloupes and how you determine whether they're ripe or not. Emily, I have really enjoyed our conversation. This has really been fun for me, and not only that, it's been educational as well. Give folks the hours of uh, the farmer's market before you get out of here, and if they want more information, where they need to go. Absolutely. So we are at the corner of G.E. Patterson and South Front Street from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Saturday from April to October. Okay. And um, that you can get more information at any of our social media pages or at memphisfarmersmarket.org. Emily Yazak, President, Memphis Farmers Market. Congratulations. Thank you for taking time to talk to our Real Talk audience. Keep up the great work and let's keep thumping those melons. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Chip. Right, Thanks for having night. me. Take, I appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. Take care. Well, listen, that 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 was a wonderful way to end this broadcast. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks are starting, as I said, to get healthy. And as we're about to wind our way on out of here, uh, really appreciate uh, you all taking uh, some time to uh, visit with us this evening. If you did not catch uh, any part of the show, you can go to the website, wyxr.org, uh, or, you know, uh, tomorrow it'll be posted. You can uh, listen to the listen to the whole thing if you want to. And more importantly, tell a friend as Marquette plays us out of here, and I would be remiss if I didn't say uh, uh, hello to, uh, we, you have a special guest in the studio tonight. His name is Jack. He is, ha! <laughs> He didn't know that was coming. He, he's here. He's here checking us out tonight. He's a freshman at the University of Memphis, and he might, just might, be a uh, future member of the Chip Washington uh, sensation called Real Talk Memphis. No, I'm just, anyway, <laughs> thanks for coming, man. Appreciate you. Hope, hopefully, you hopefully you won't uh, be a stranger uh, when you come back here. Talking Memphis is up next. My man, Robbie Grant. Robbie's the man, you know that? He's the man, Robbie Grant. He is here, and he's going to be hosting the show uh, coming up here in just a minute or two. And in the meantime, in between time, listen, uh, thank you so much for your support. Uh, Thank you for your encouragement. Uh, And uh, thank you for everything that you are doing to make Memphis and the Mid-South a better place to live, to work, and to just hang out. Okay, so uh, if the Lord says so, I'll be back here same time, same seat, same station for another edition of Real Talk Memphis for Adam, for Marquette and for Chip. We are out.